All right, picture this. Tomorrow, you wake up and the world's turned into a deep freezer. No power, no grocery stores, no cozy heater humming in the background, just snow, ice, and a brutal cold that doesn't care if you're not ready. You've been thrown back 100,000 years, smack in the middle of the ice age. And your survival? It depends entirely on whatever skills you've got right now, plus a big dose of gut instinct. No modern tools, no quick fixes. The truth is, most of us today wouldn't stand a chance. We've lost touch with the basic survival know-how that used to be second nature to our ancestors. But back then, it wasn't optional. It was everything. And if anyone knew how to tough out a vicious Ice Age winter, it was the Neanderthals. These folks weren't just braving the cold, they were thriving in it in ways we're only starting to understand. Over the past few decades, archaeologists have dug through ancient Neanderthal sites across Europe and Asia. And what they've found is wild. Marks on bones that look oddly similar to what we see in animals that hibernate today. Some scientists think this could mean Neanderthals had some kind of long-term rest cycle. Maybe not full-on bear-style hibernation, but something that helped them survive when food was scarce and the cold was bone deep. Others argue those bone marks just show signs of sickness or starvation. Either way, it raises one hell of a question. Did Neanderthals pull off something as extreme as hibernation? Or did they rely purely on fire, community, and a heck of a lot of grit to make it through the coldest months? Let's break down what hibernation actually is. It's one of nature's most hardcore survival hacks. When animals hibernate, they slow everything down. Body temperature, heart rate, breathing, metabolism, so they can survive for weeks, sometimes months, without eating. Some even cycle in and out of this deep rest. Their bodies warm up for a few hours, then cool right back down. That break in the middle of sleep? It turns out it's essential, keeping the immune system working, the brain in check, and flushing out waste. But here's the thing. Hibernation isn't a one-size-fits-all deal. It exists on a whole spectrum. Some animals take the short route with what's called daily torpor, basically a power nap for survival. They shut things down for a few hours, just enough to conserve energy. You'll see this in creatures like hummingbirds and bats. Then there's the long game, seasonal dormancy. That's the umbrella term that covers both hibernation and its hot weather cousin, estivation. Think of estivation as hibernation's summer vacation, used by animals to ride out heat waves and drought when things get too dry to handle. No matter the season, all these strategies evolved for one purpose, to deal with brutal environmental stress. Whether it's freezing cold or blazing heat, nature has its hacks. Now, if you're looking for the poster child of true hibernation, check out the ground squirrel. These little champs can drop their core temperature below freezing and stay in a state of deep torpor for eight months. Heart rate slows to a crawl. Metabolism? Practically offline. And they can go weeks without so much as twitching. Every now and then, they briefly wake up, maybe to reset their systems, then dive right back into sleep mode. Then you've got bears. Everyone knows bears hibernate, right? But their version's a little different. Depending on the species and the local climate, they'll bunk down in their dens for five to seven months. Unlike the squirrels, though, bears keep their body temperatures surprisingly high. They're not completely shut down, but they're definitely not up and moving either. Biologists now see bear hibernation as its own specialized thing, still impressive, just tailor-made for big-bodied animals like them. Now here's where it gets interesting. Among primates, hibernation is super rare. That's mostly because we've got high-powered metabolisms and big old brains that are constantly hungry for energy. But there's one wild exception, the fat-tailed dwarf lemur from Madagascar. It doesn't deal with snow, but the winters there are bone dry. So what does it do? It hibernates to survive droughts. These tiny lemurs can vanish into tree hollows or burrow underground for up to seven months living off fat stored in their tails. That little guy is a proof that even a primate, yeah, 
one of our distant cousins, can evolve to hibernate if the pressure's right. And that opens up a fascinating possibility. If lemurs can do it, could our extinct relatives like Neanderthals have done something similar? After all, Neanderthals weren't just surviving Ice Age winters, they were living through cycles of extreme climate swings. The Earth kept flipping the switch between glacial and interglacial periods, and Europe especially could get brutally cold. We're talking average yearly temperatures dropping 5 to 10 degrees Celsius lower than today. Summers would have been short and cool. The land, covered in grassy plains and sparse forests, teemed with game, but only during the good months. The rest of the year, total grind mode. So, how cold are we talking? Studies suggest summer temperatures during the Ice Age hovered around 54 to 59 degrees Fahrenheit. Not bad, right? But here's the kicker. Winters took a nosedive, dropping well below freezing. We're talking brutal, bone-chilling cold that could last for months. These seasonal swings weren't just uncomfortable, they reshaped the way Neanderthals had to live. When prey migrated or hunkered down, Neanderthals had to adjust, moving with the seasons and shifting what they hunted and gathered just to stay alive. Take Gibraltar, for example. At Gorham's cave, scientists analyzed old frog and lizard fossils to reconstruct the ancient climate. Turns out about 50,000 years ago, the average yearly temperature was only about 3 degrees Fahrenheit cooler than today. But don't be fooled, those winters were way longer and way nastier. Summer still felt kind of Mediterranean, but winter? Total icebox. So what does that mean for how Neanderthals lived? Well, in the warmer months, they were probably doing what most early humans did. Hunting, foraging, fishing. Their diet was flexible, relying on a mix of plants, small animals, and big game. They were omnivores with a sharp eye for opportunity. But winter likely changed the game. One research team led by Antonis Bartziokas and Juan Luis Arzuaga think so. These guys have been digging deep into the famous Cima de los Huesos site in Spain, one of Europe's most important prehistoric caves. They found a treasure trove of early human fossils nearly 500,000 years old. Now, these weren't exactly Neanderthals, but they were their ancestors, and they lived during a serious cold snap. The researchers wanted to know, how did these ancient hominins survive such intense glacial conditions? They went full CSI using microscopes, CT scans, and high-res imaging to analyze the bones. What they found were strange patterns, tunnels in the spongy parts of bones, weird new bone growth, and a creepy texture that looked kind of like rotting wood. These lesions, especially common in younger individuals, match signs we see today in people suffering from chronic kidney issues like parathyroid disorders and, you guessed it, rickets. But here's the twist. These same bone features also show up in modern animals that hibernate. What these researchers found wasn't just bone damage. It was a pattern. Damage, then healing. Then damage again, over and over. It's the same rhythm you'd expect from an animal slipping into deep torpor, shutting down for long stretches, waking up briefly, then going under again. And the wildest part? Some of the younger individuals showed signs that their puberty didn't follow a smooth path. It looks like their development actually paused, then picked up again later. Like nature, hit the pause button on growing up. So what does that mean? The team dropped a bold theory. Maybe these early Neanderthals hibernated, or at least entered some kind of torpor-like state to survive the worst parts of the Ice Age. Deep inside dark, insulated caves, they may have hunkered down, slowing their bodies just enough to ride out the cold and hunger. It's a radical idea, but one that could explain those strange bone patterns and how these hominins endured such brutal environments. And here's where it gets even cooler. These Neanderthals weren't the only ones showing signs of seasonal struggle. Turns out, the same cave system, Zima de los Huesos, was also home to cave bears, and their bones? showed very similar damage. Same lesions, same bone remodeling. That suggests both species, bears and early humans, were getting hit by the same seasonal pressures. Freezing temps, scarce food, 
long, dark winters. The researchers even suggest hibernation may have been the only viable survival strategy in that environment, and that opens a whole new door. What if Neanderthals were watching these bears and learning? Because remember, Neanderthals weren't brainless brutes. They were smart, adaptable, and incredibly observant. Even if they didn't evolve to hibernate the way bears do, they may have mimicked aspects of that behavior. Picture it, a bleak ice age winter in ancient Europe. Snow blankets the land. The wind is sharp enough to cut through bone. Food is vanishing. A small group of Neanderthals retreats deep into a cave, seeking shelter from the storm. And just a few steps deeper in the same cave, a massive bear sound asleep, silent, still alive. Season after season, the Neanderthals watch. The bear disappears when the cold comes and re-emerges when it fades. It doesn't eat, it barely moves, but somehow it survives. So the Neanderthals watched and they learned. Smart, observant, and in tune with nature, they may have started connecting the dots. What if slowing the body, quieting the mind, wasn't just some animal instinct? What if it was a choice? A survival tactic passed down through generations? Maybe they didn't hibernate in the full sense, but they might have mimicked aspects of the bear's winter rhythm. It's a captivating idea, but like all bold theories, it comes with some serious caveats. First up, the science. Those strange bone lesions? They could easily be explained by other stuff. Malnutrition, illness, or even the body's natural response to food shortages. When nutrients are low, the body starts cutting corners, like halting bone growth to conserve energy. Archaeologists see this all the time in things like enamel hypoplasias, those horizontal lines on teeth that mark periods of physical stress. So yeah, the lesions might hint at hibernation, but they might not. Then there's the issue of data. Well-preserved Neanderthal fossils are rare, and they're scattered across time and geography. That makes it tough to know if these bone patterns were common across the species or just isolated cases, so we have to be cautious. We can't yet say this was a widespread behavior for all Neanderthals. And finally, the big one, brains. Neanderthals had brains just as big as ours, sometimes even bigger. And big brains are hungry. They don't take kindly to being shut down. Unlike tiny hibernating animals whose brains actually shrink and go quiet, Neanderthals needed a steady flow of oxygen and calories to keep their neurons firing. You can't just flip a switch and power down a brain like that, not without serious consequences. Sure, bears pull it off, but they're built different. They've got massive fat reserves, lower brain to body ratios, and a biology that's tailor-made for deep sleep. Neanderthals, their bodies and brains ran on a tighter budget, more like us. So while full-on hibernation might be off the table, that doesn't mean they weren't resourceful. So how did they survive those brutal winters? One of their most underrated breakthroughs, clothing. Even though we haven't found any ancient Neanderthal hoodies preserved in ice, we've got solid, indirect evidence they dressed for the cold. Cut marks on animal bones show they carefully removed hides. Their tools, and even their teeth, show microscopic signs of working with tough animal skins. They weren't just throwing a pelt over their shoulders. These folks were scraping, drying, stretching, maybe even tanning hides. Their clothing likely shifted with the seasons and adapted to the region. In the colder regions, Neanderthals likely bundled up in heavy coats made from bear or bison hides, serious ice age outerwear. In milder zones, they may have used lighter wraps. These hides weren't just for clothing, they probably doubled as bedding or even helped insulate their shelters. In short, mastering hide use was key to their survival. It was smart, practical, and a huge testament to their ability to adapt to some of the harshest conditions the planet had to offer. But it wasn't just about what they wore. Fire was another game changer. Across Neanderthal sites in France, archaeologists have found stone tools that were almost certainly used to start fires. These weren't just random rocks, they were specifically chosen to strike sparks, just like flint and steel. And that tells us something important. 
They weren't just borrowing fire from lightning strikes or wildfires. Some Neanderthals may have made their own fire from scratch. One cave site even showed that the clearest evidence of fire use came during times when wildfires were rare, but Neanderthal occupation was intense. That's a pretty solid clue they were sparking up their own flames. They also made smart use of caves and rock shelters, not just for protection from the elements, but for their natural insulation. And when it came to food, they planned ahead. At sites like Grotte du Lazare in southern France, researchers found layers of reindeer and ibex bones all hunted in a single season. It looks like the Neanderthals brought their haul back to camp, processed it, ate some, and stored the rest. Maybe dried, maybe smoked, ready for the long winter ahead. And behind all of this was their secret weapon, each other. Neanderthal groups were tight-knit, small but strong in their social bonds. They likely survived winter by huddling together around communal fires, helping the sick, sharing food, and keeping each other warm. Some scientists believe they even had long-distance exchange networks trading hides, tools, and information with neighboring groups. Their social fabric was their safety net, and when the world froze over, that web of relationships may have been their greatest survival tool of all. So whether or not Neanderthals ever truly hibernated, the fact that scientists are even entertaining the idea speaks volumes. It reminds us how complex they were. These weren't mindless cave dwellers. They were innovators, survivors, creatures of instinct and intelligence navigating the edge of the human experience. And maybe, just maybe, some piece of that endurance, some quiet echo of those ancient winters still lives in us today. Click on the video on your screen to keep enjoying our content. See you in the next video.